Hello, Malma Angeles, and you're watching Eagle News International. Hello, CJ. Hello, Alma, and good evening to everyone watching the news. Here are the headlines. The COVID-19 pandemic is continuing to claim lives with new cases rising worldwide, even as vaccination programs continue to roll out. Malacanang said the country's COVID-19 infections hitting one million mark is not negative reflection of the government's pandemic response. The Indonesian military said the missing submarine has been found cracked apart on the seafloor in waters of Bali as it confirmed that all 53 crew were dead. And Myanmar's junta again postponed court proceedings against deposed leader Aung San Suu Kyi on Monday, her lawyers said, as they fight for permission to visit her 12 weeks after she was detained. The COVID-19 pandemic is continuing to claim lives with new cases rising worldwide, even as vaccination programs continue to roll out. Shocking stories of patients dying outside hospitals have spurred promises of support from the international community in India. Take a look. वहां पर गेट पर से ही लगा दिया कहे कि नहीं देंगे यहां पर आया था यहां पर केवल कोरोना टेस्ट हुआ था उसके बाद जो है दवा तक भी नहीं लिखा उन्हें कई कितने बार बोला कि दवा वहां से यहां यहां से वहां कम से कम 2 घंटे तक घुमा दिया पर 3 दिन से लगातार ट्राई कर कभी इस अस्पताल कभी उस अस्पताल इतना पूरा हाल कभी नहीं देखा था मैंने the United States on Sunday led international pledges of support for India as the country grappled with worsening COVID crisis with record daily death rates and severe medical shortages. President Joe Biden said the U.S. was determined to help India in its time of need, immediately making available supplies of vaccine production, material therapeutics tests, ventilators, and protective equipment. Western nations, including Britain, France, and Germany, have also also pledged help. The Indian healthcare system has struggled to cope with a huge surge in cases, leaving patients, families begging for help on social media and the capital New Delhi forced to extend its strict lockdown. COVID-19 has now killed more than 3 million people worldwide since emerging in China in December of 2019. India, which has a population of 1.3 billion, has driven increases in global case numbers in recent days, recording 340 49,691 new infections and 2,767 deaths on Sunday, the highest since the start of the pandemic. India Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that the country had been shaken by a storm as he called on people to get vaccinated and not get swayed by any rumor about the vaccines. The country has administered almost 141 million vaccine shots so far, but experts say the mass inoculation program needs to be significantly stepped up. Archfo Pakistan offered support and assistance as Prime Minister Imran Khan tweeted prayers for a speedy recovery. In a related news, Britain announced it is sending life-saving medical equipment to India to help them in the fight against the rising infections in the country. Here's Caroline Kennedy of our EBC UK Bureau with that story. Caroline. Britain on Sunday said that it would be sending life saving medical equipment to India, including ventilators and oxygen concentrators as the South Asian country reels from the record numbers of COVID-19 infections and deaths. London will ship more than 600 pieces of equipment to New Delhi to support the fight against the virus following our request from India and Prime Minister Boris Johnson pledging that the UK would do all that it can to help. We stand side by side with India as a friend and as a partner during what is deeply concerning time in the fight against COVID-19, Johnson said in a statement.
vital medical equipment, including hundreds of oxygen concentrators and ventilators, is now on its way from the United Kingdom to India to support the efforts to prevent the tragic loss of life from the terrible virus. We will continue to work closely with the Indian government during this difficult time and determined to make sure that the UK does everything it can do to support the international community in the global fight against the pandemic. Until this crisis is broke, Johnson had been due to travel to the country on Sunday, but the three-day visit has been postponed. Britain's Foreign Office, which is funding the aid, said that the first shipment would leave the country on Sunday arriving in New Delhi in early hours on Tuesday, with further shipments following later in the week. In total, nine airline containers of supplies, including 495 concentrators, 120 non-invasive ventilators and 20 manual ventilators will be sent to the country, said the Ministry. I'm Caroline Kennedy, we live in interesting times and I'm reporting from North East England. Meanwhile, the Philippines is studying the possibility of imposing restrictions on travelers from India to prevent the spread of new coronavirus strains in the country that, according to Malacanang, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said in a virtual press briefing that they are currently studying it, although he said we don't have any direct flights to India. India is currently battling a double mutant strain of coronavirus, which is believed to be more transmissible than previous strains. The variant is known as B1617 and has two unusual mutations, the E484Q and L425R. Currently, foreigners except diplomats and healthcare workers are still barred from entering the Philippines. Foreign parents, spouses, and children of Filipinos may enter the country, provided that they are traveling with the Filipino principle and have a valid entry. India's health ministry first acknowledged the presence of the double mutant strain at the end of March. World Health Organization Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus said he is deeply concerned about the situation in India and aside from the B1617 strain, other variants of SARS-CoV-2, including those first reported in South Africa, or the United Kingdom and Brazil have also emerged globally. The number of coronavirus cases logged in the Philippines since the start of the pandemic topped 1 million today as a health official warned against easing restrictions to give hospitals some breathing room. Nearly 9,000 new infections in the past 24 hours took the country's caseload to 1,006,428, the second highest in Southeast Asia with 16,853 fatalities according to government figures. Years. However, the country's recovery tally from the coronavirus is increased to 914,952 with 11,333 new recoveries reported on Monday. A lockdown imposed on the national capital region and four surrounding provinces at the end of March to slow a record surge in infections appears to be working. New cases in the capital, the epicenter of the outbreak, fell 20% to an average of 3,841 per day last week, data released by independent research group Okta Show. The occupancy rate of hospital beds allocated for COVID-19 patients has also eased after capacity was boosted and isolation facilities for mild cases was expanded. But Health Undersecretary Rosario Verjeda said infections would go back up if restrictions were relaxed now. And staying in the country, Malacanang today said the country's COVID-19 infections hitting 1 million mark is not negative reflection of the government's pandemic response. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque maintained that the government is doing a good job preventing the spread of new virus strains in the country. Let's listen in. Tignan natin ang infographic sa daily new confirmed cases per million as of April 24, 2021. Tignan po natin na bagamat tumaas po ang kaso sa Pilipinas at tayo po ay ang letter parang reddish 
Ito po ay mababa kung ikukumpira pa rin natin sa Estados Unidos, Espanya, Italia, India, Germany, Brazil, France, at Turkey. Ibig sabihin po, bagamat talaga naman po halos nagdoble ang kaso sa Pilipinas, dahil dito sa mga new variants neto, hindi po tayo nag-iisa. Ito po ay problema ng buong mundo. Okay. Kaya nga po, kung titignan natin ang ranking ng Pilipinas sa buong mundo, eh makikita nyo po na sa total cases, tayo po'y nag-improve pa. Dati nasa number 20 po tayo. Ngayon, nasa number 26 na tayo, bagamat halos isang milyon na ang kaso natin. Ang ibig sabihin lang dang po niyan, bagamat mag-iisang milyon na ang mga kaso sa Pilipinas, ganun din po ang nangyayari sa iba't iba't ibang parte ng mundo. Bumaba pa po tayo sa ranking natin dahil dati nasa number 20 na tayo. Sa active cases, tayo po ay number 27 na from number 20. So nag-improve po tayo worldwide. At ang ating cases per mil, 1 million, ay nananatiling nasa number 133 po tayo. At ang case fatality rate natin ay nananatili pa rin 1.7% na tayo po ay nasa number 90. Pumunta po tayo sa glit sa cases at deaths. Makikita na tumata tumataas talaga mga kaso at mga namamatay sa Estados Unidos, sa India, Brazil, France at Russia. Ang mga kaso po ng Estados Unidos, 32 million. Ang mga deaths po nila, mahigit kalahating milyon. Ang pangalawa po, India, 16 million, halos 17 million. Ang deaths, 192 million. Ang Brazil, 14 million ang kaso. Ang mga namatay, 390,000, mahigit. Ang France po, 5.5 million na ang kaso, 103,000 mga namatay. At ang Russia, 4.7 million na po ang kaso, mga 106 na po ang namatay. Ang Pilipinas po, mag-iisang milyon na nga po ang ating kaso, pero 16,783 pa rin po ang mga namamatay. Sa mga recoveries naman, nasa halos isang milyon na po ang gumaling sa atin. No? Kung saan number 21 po tayo sa buong mundo. Instead of looking at the country's total COVID-19 cases, Secretary Roque said the best indicator on whether the country is successful in its response is by looking at the recoveries. Meanwhile, Secretary Roque said the government's pandemic task force is expected to discuss this week the new quarantine classifications for May. He earlier said the interagency task force for the management of emerging infectious diseases would look into the analytics of the healthcare system of the National Capital Region Plus and the rest of the country. In other COVID news, bars, restaurants, cinemas, and concert halls partially reopen in Rome and across Italy in a boost for COVID-19 uh, or coronavirus hit businesses. After months of stop-start restrictions imposed to manage its second and third waves of COVID-19, Italy hopes this latest easing will mark the start of something like a normal summer. Take a look. Bye. Speriamo che noi non ne abusiamo, perché certo queste frustrazioni non sono il capriccio di un despota, sono tentativi di arginare una catastrofe, quindi ben venga che possiamo avere meno restrizioni. Italy was the first European country to be hit by the pandemic in early 2020 and remains one of the worst affected with the EU's highest reported death toll and one of the deepest recessions. Prime Minister Mario Draghi has been under intense pressure from regional governments and increasingly regular street protests to ease restrictions as Italy battles its deepest recession since World War II. He has admitted to taking a calculated risk as infection rates and intensive care admissions fall, but deaths still mount at more than 300 every day to more than 119,000. The vaccination program is gaining pace with more than 17.5 million jabs administered so far in a population of around 60 million. But there are disparities between regions. In other news, the Indonesian military said the missing submarine has been found cracked apart on the seafloor in waters of Bali as it confirmed that all 53 crew, crew members were dead. Take a look. 
dengan kesedihan yang mendalam. Selaku Panglima TNI, prajurit-prajurit terbaik hiu kencana telah gugur saat melaksanakan tugas di perairan utara Bali. Kapal ini bukan atau tidak human error. Jadi bukan human error. Karena saat uh, proses uh, menyelam itu sudah melalui prosedur yang betul. Uh, pakaian escape suit MK11 yang tadi ini diambil oleh uh, ROV-nya uh, MV Sweet Rescue. Ini tadi dicepit, dicepit. Dan ini sempat keluar dan dicepit. Ya ini adalah ini badan badan kapal. Memang, memang tidak terlalu terang. The submarine 105 in Indonesia's fleet disappeared early Wednesday during live torpedo training exercises off the Indonesian holiday island. An oil spill spotted where the submarine was thought to have submerged pointed to possible fuel tank damage, fanning fears of a deadly disaster. The sailors' oxygen reserves were understood to have run out earlier in the day. The vessel was scheduled to conduct the training exercises when it asked for permission to dive. It lost contact shortly after. Authorities have not offered possible explanations for the submarine's sudden disappearance or commented on questions about whether the decades-old vessel was overloaded. The military has said the submarine delivered to Indonesia in 1981 was seaworthy. Neighboring Singapore and Malaysia, as well as the U.S. and Australia, were among nations helping in the hunt, with nearly two dozen ships deployed to scour a search zone covering about 10 square nautical miles. Australia's HMAS Ballarat arrived earlier on Saturday with a U.S. P-8 Poseidon aircraft. Singapore's MV Swift Rescue, a submarine rescue vessel, was also taking part. And other news, Myanmar's junta again postponed court proceedings against the post leader Aung San Suu Kyi on Monday, according to her lawyers, as they fight for permission to visit her 12 weeks after she was detained. Take a look. Hey, the case was adjourned to death. Me, for the only one issue, for the answer of the police whether to make the arrangements between the defendants and the lawyers. Don San Suu Kyi said to uh, the <coughs> presiding judge, that question, that de demand and that uh, application was made by her very long ago uh, to meet, uh, to make a meeting with, uh, to arrange a meeting with the lawyers and her. But it, it didn't materialize up to now, she said. Suchi has been under house arrest with the junta charging her under six cases, including four sedition and having unlicensed walkie-talkies. But movement on her case was once again delayed until May 10, according to her lawyer Min Min So. Uh, in a statement after the hearing on Monday. Twelve weeks since Suu Kyi was detained, Min Min So said they still have not received permission to meet their client face-to-face, -face, one of many hurdles the team has faced. Besides not being able to meet with Suu Kyi, Junta imposed a mobile data shutdown, so have also prevented video conferencing in previous hearings. The most serious charge Suu Kyi faces falls under Myanmar's official secrets law, with a hearing due in Yangon on May 6. The junta has justified its power grab by claiming it is protecting democracy, alleging electoral fraud in November elections, which the NLD won in a landslide. Since the coup, security forces have killed more than 750 people, according to a local monitoring group. The junta has given a much lower death toll and blames the violence on rioters.
Myanmar's military must restore democracy and stop the violence against citizens. That according to Indonesian President Joko Widodo, after crisis talks with junta chief Min Ong Lang and Southeast Asian or ASEAN leaders on Saturday. He also called for the release of political prisoners and for a special envoy to be allowed into the crisis-hit nation to push for dialogue. Take a look. Perkembangan situasi di Myanmar sesuatu yang tidak dapat diterima dan tidak boleh terus berlangsung. Kekerasan harus dihentikan dan demokrasi, stabilitas, dan perdamaian di Myanmar harus segera dikembalikan. Saya juga menyampaikan pentingnya pemimpin militer Myanmar untuk memberikan komitmen, yaitu Permintaan komitmen pertama, penghentian penggunaan kekerasan dari militer Myanmar. Di saat yang sama, semua pihak harus menahan diri sehingga ketegangan dapat diredakan. Tahanan politik harus segera dilepaskan. Dan perlu dibentuk special envoy ASEAN, yaitu Sekjen dan Ketua ASEAN untuk mendorong dialog dengan semua pihak di Myanmar. Disampaikan oleh Indonesia, ternyata sejalan dengan yang disampaikan oleh para pemimpin ASEAN. Sehingga dapat dikatakan para pemimpin ASEAN telah mencapai konsensus. The strongly worded comments follow the meeting in Jakarta of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN, which was the senior Myanmar general's first foreign trip since security forces staged a coup that ousted civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi in early February. Ming Ong Ning has become the focus of international outrage over the coup and a subsequent crackdown on dissent that has left more than 700 people dead. Min Ang Leng did not make a formal public statement, but Singapore's Prime Minister Lee Shin Lung, who called for the release of Suu Kyi from house arrest, said the junta leader heard us. Also at the weekend meeting was the Sultan of Brunei, the current chair of ASEAN, as well as leaders and foreign ministers from most of the 10-country group, including Malaysia, Cambodia, Thailand, Vietnam, the Philippines, and Laos. There have also been calls for the regional bloc to expel Myanmar, but ASEAN has previously taken a mostly hands-off approach to members' internal, internal affairs. Few analysts had expected major breakthroughs from the meeting, saying instead it was a chance to bring Myanmar's military to the bargaining table and pave the way for a possible solution. To Japan now, where shopping malls and bars are closed in Tokyo after the country declared a new virus state of emergency in the capital just three months before the Olympics. The new measure came into effect on Sunday and will run until May 11. Japan announced a new virus state of emergency in Tokyo and three other regions on Friday as the country battles surging infections just three months before the opening of or the opening ceremony of the Olympics. Japan's Minister for Virus Response, Yasutoshi Nishimura, earlier warned of a strong sense of crisis, saying current restrictions were not sufficient. The measures will be tougher than Japan's last state of emergency imposed in parts of the country from January, but still far short of the harsh lockdown seen in some parts of the world. Authorities want bars and restaurants to shut their doors completely or to stop selling alcohol and close by 8 p.m. and to shutter major commercial facilities like malls. The measure will coincide with the Golden Week holiday that is Japan's busiest travel period of the year and could involve cutting some public transport services to discourage movement. Spectators will also be barred from sports events which can continue behind closed doors and remote working will be encouraged. Japan's vaccine program is also moving slowly, with just over 1.5 million people given a first shot and only around 827,000 fully vaccinated. Prime Minister Suga Yoshihide said Friday that the country's 36 million elderly residents should have or should be vaccinated by the end of July.
And the news continues here on Eagle News. We'll be right back. This portion is brought to you by Canriv Corporation, your ventilation and air conditioning specialist. Services offered. Supply and installation of elevators, escalators, air conditioners, ventilators, jet towel, hand dryers, generators, access control system, factory automation, and modernization. For more info, please contact Ami Kanke at 0915-263-7198 or 0998-900-3224. Mula noon hanggang ngayon, gabay natin ang MTRCB ratings sa matalino at responsabling panonood. Sa tamang pagsunod sa MTRCB ratings, ginagawa nating ligtas at makabuluhan ang panonood ng bawat miyembro ng Pamilyang Pilipino. Lumipas man ang panahon hanggang may Pamilyang Pilipino, andyan ang MTRCB. Welcome back. The Philippine Coast Guard is conducting drills in the South China Sea, which an official said Sunday were part of efforts to secure, quote, our maritime jurisdiction over the disputed waters. The exercises near the Philippine-occupied T2 Island and China-controlled Scarborough Shoal come amid heightened tensions over the resource-rich sea. The latest diplomatic wrangle between the two countries was triggered by the detection last month of hundreds of Chinese vessels in the Spratly Islands. Most of the votes have since dispersed around the contested archipelago. China, which claims almost the entirety of the sea, has refused repeated demands by the Philippines to call back the ships, which Manila says are maritime militia vessels and Beijing says are just fishing boats. In response, the Philippines has deployed more patrol vessels, including Coast Guard and Navy ships, to intensify surveillance and prevent illegal fishing. The Coast Guard drills began last week, and they are being held near Thetu Island and Scarborough Shoal as well as the Batanes Islands in the north and the southern and eastern parts of the country. Scarborough, one of the region's richest fishing grounds, has long been a flashpoint between Manila and Beijing. China seized it from the Philippines in 2012 following a tense standoff. The drills began as Philippine Armed Forces held joint exercises with U.S. soldiers that ended last Friday. To the U.S. now, where the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act is a proposed legislation intended to address the rise in hate crimes and violence against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, or AAPI. The said bill recently passed the Senate by an overwhelming 94 to 1 bipartisan vote. And we have Alfred Asenas from our EBC Hawaii Bureau, or Hawaii Pacific Bureau, with that story. Alfred. This legislation sends a dual message to our Asian American community. We will not tolerate violence and bigotry against you. And to those who perpetrate the violence and bigotry, we're going to pursue you to the full extent of the law. Once the COVID-19 hate crimes bill is signed into law, the federal government will guide state and local law enforcement on how to establish online hate crime reporting procedures in multiple languages. And an elderly man told me he's afraid to walk down the street in the house where he lives because he's been cursed at and spat upon. And a young lady told me she no longer rides the subways because the stairs were so mean and forbidding. And those two stories can be repeated thousands of times over each day in every state. So we must do something. And today we did. The bill will also advise local governments on how to expand education programs to help law enforcement understand and interact effectively with communities from other cultures. My 80-year-old mom came home from the grocery store visibly upset. 
because she had, and I asked her what had happened, and she had been harassed by the grocery store clerk who kept pushing her away as she was trying to buy some grapes. And she was trying to pick up grapes, and they, she, they were, she was told, go stand over there. And so she moved over, and they said, no, go stand over there. And they just kept hassling her, and this happens all the time. Um, and my mom finally confronted the grocery store clerk and said, listen, I'm just here to buy grapes for my granddaughter's lunch. I'm not here to fight you. Just let me buy the grapes. And this bill will allow me to go home and tell my mom we did something about it. And this bill tells the AAPI community, who are seen as the other, who are often asked, where are you from, really? And I've had that happen to me while wearing the uniform of this nation with her flag on my shoulder, been asked, where are you from, really? Yeah, yeah, your dad has been here since before the revolution, but where are you from? This tells the AAPI community, we see you, and we will stand with you, and we will protect you. Additionally, federal agencies will issue guidance on how to diminish racially discriminatory language in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic. I cannot tell you how important this bill is to the AAPI community who often has felt very invisible in our country, always seen as foreign, always seen as the other. And for them to experience a kind of hatred against them through no provocation on their part, to be the victims of unprovoked, just random assaults on them as they are minding their own business in the subways, grocery stores, takeout restaurants, on the street. This bill, I would say, just as important as the substance of the bill and what we hope to do by gathering the kind of data we need, that uh, as important as the content and substance of the bill is the message of this bill that we in the Senate are going to stand with our AAPI community and indeed any community that is discriminated against on the basis of race or any of the categories that you and I can think of. So as we say in Hawaii, mahalo nui loa to everyone. According to the 2018 census, there are about 22.6 million Asian Americans and roughly 1.1 million Pacific Islanders living in the United States. Meanwhile, the Senate has been coordinating with the House of Representatives to do a quick vote on some additional language to the most current bill before President Biden signs the finalized version, hopefully sometime in May, which also happens to be Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Reporting from Honolulu, Hawaii, I'm Alfred Asenas, Eagle News. We live in interesting times. Back to you. And indeed, the U.S. Senate overwhelmingly passed the anti-Asian American hate crime bill. Earlier, our ABC correspondent in the U.S., Donna Rosca, talked to Eleanor Fernandez, the board president of the Manila Heritage Foundation. Let's listen in. At this very moment, we are fortunate to have Ms. Eleanor Fernandez. She is actually the board president of the Manila Town Heritage Foundation. And we just wanted to hear some good news for us uh, Asians, you know, Filipinos, with regards to a bill that has been passed in Congress the other day. L. Yes, it was a uh, uh, Senate passed an anti-Asian American hate crime bill. It actually was passed with flying colors and it was brought to the floor by Senator Macy Hirano, who is a representative from Hawaii. And so they passed it addressing the recent surge in attacks um, amid the COVID pandemic. As you know, um, some of these attacks are baseless because they're blaming Asians for actually um, bringing on the virus. And so this measure basically is just asking our system to focus on putting a position where they can beef up state and local hate crime reporting. And so just to even report the crimes because um, it might go unreported. And so lawmakers or police think that probably doesn't happen, but uh -huh. yesterday, you know, it sends a solid message 
of solidarity in in Congress that they recognize this, that um, that there is a surge in anti Asian violence. But uh, we just wanted to touch on something different, like the rollout uh, of uh, the vaccine. How is it so far? Is it been uh, equally distributed? I don't know. What it is in across the United States, in California. Uh, the recent reports are that we are the lowest, I think, in COVID um, because we have rolled out to most of the counties in California. Um, for example, you and me, we live in the Silicon Valley. I think they had a shortage for a, for a moment when they first started to roll it out just for seniors. But now that they're making it available just this week for uh, teenagers 16 and over now, I think I, I saw a news story where they actually are seeing less people, not less people, but they have more vaccines than none where I live. Mm -hmm. um, that might not be the case across the United States when we're talking about rural communities, you know, they're kind mm -hmm. of like out of urban areas, but hopefully as more people get vaccinated and and you see your friends and relatives get vaccinated and they, they get more vaccines out there. And I think it's because it's a mandate for the president himself to get like 200 million shots by a certain uh -huh. time, right? So, mm -hmm. and we feel more comfortable about it. I, I know I do. I, I think this week I just got my second shot, Pfizer shot, and Okay. Just the mental state of feeling going out, feeling okay, okay mm -hmm. to go out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Miss Eleanor Fernandez. She is uh, the board president of uh, the Manila Town Heritage Foundation. And in behalf of uh, Radio Aguilas America, we would like to say thank you. And of course, uh, we are here in reporting live here in Silicon Valley, and we live in interesting times. In other news, Hong Kong announces plans with Singapore to resurrect their scrapped coronavirus travel bubble with dedicated flights between the two cities starting on May 26. The two business hubs had to abandon a highly anticipated quarantine-free travel corridor late last year after Hong Kong was hit with a fourth wave of infections. Take a look. <laughs> Uh, we hope that while the Hong Kong Singapore arrangement, uh, if succeed, could also be the basis uh, for us to uh, talk to uh, other economies or countries where we feel comfort comfortable. Uh, uh, and uh, agreeable for both sides. Now the two business hubs had to abandon a highly anticipated quarantine-free travel corridor late last year again after Hong Kong was hit with the fourth wave of infections. From May 26, one flight per day carrying up to 200 passengers will shuttle between the two cities. Cathay Pacific and Singapore Airlines will share the route with two daily flights planned from June 10 onwards. Hong Kongers heading to Singapore will have to have received two doses of either the Pfizer-BioNTech or Sinovac vaccines, an attempt to encourage inoculation in a city where take-up so far has remained a tepid 11% despite ample supplies. Travelers from Singapore, where the vaccination rate is around 20%, will not be required to have been inoculated, but must test negative before departure and on arrival. Both Hong Kong and Singapore maintain strict quarantine rules for all arrivals, a measure that has kept infections comparatively low. But the restrictions have battered tourism and the wider economy. Hong Kong and Singapore's bubble is dependent on both sides, remaining relatively coronavirus free in the coming months. Both sides have agreed that the bubble will be suspended for two weeks if the daily average of untraceable infections in one week 
reaches more than five in either city. Meanwhile, Australian authorities on Monday lifted a snap three-day lockdown of Perth, but faced pointed questions about how the coronavirus leaked from a quarantine hotel for returning travelers. Stay-at-home orders for Perth and surrounding areas will expire at midnight today after just two people contracted COVID-19 out of thousands tested in the region. Western Australian State Premier Mark McGowan said it was a circuit breaker when needed to limit community spread and keep our community healthy, unquote. The virus reportedly spread from a man who recently returned from his wedding in India to other travelers at a quarantine hotel, including one who then unknowingly infected people and the community after being released from isolation. The cases have prompted a fresh debate over the effectiveness and fairness of Australia's hotel quarantine system, which is now being copied in several countries around the world. Australia closed its international borders to most non-citizens in March 2020, with those allowed to travel subject to 14 days in quarantine, a policy that effectively curbed the spread of COVID-19. But quarantine hotels have been the source of each outbreak in Australia since early in the pandemic, leading to a series of snap lockdowns across the country and ever-tightening travel rules. Meanwhile, New Zealand on Friday paused arrivals from Western Australia, temporarily excluding the state's travelers from a quarantine-free bubble between the countries due to a COVID-19 outbreak. Earlier on Friday, the Perth and uh, Peel regions were sent into a three-day lockdown after Western Australia recorded its first community transmission of the virus in 12 months. A man in his 50s who currently left hotel quarantine flew into Melbourne from Perth on Wednesday and tested positive for the coronavirus earlier Friday. One of the man's close contacts in Perth also tested positive for the virus, raising concerns that it may have spread further into the community. Despite testing negative for the virus before leaving hotel quarantine, a requirement for all international arrivals to Australia, authorities believe the man likely contracted COVID-19 from another hotel guest. Meanwhile, Israel continues its vaccination campaign inside the parking lot of the uh, Givatayim Mall in Israel's Mediterranean coastal city of Tel Aviv as the number of COVID jabs administered globally surpassed the 1 billion mark on Saturday, offering hope even as the number of virus cases worldwide hit a new daily record, mainly due to an explosion of infections in India. Take a look. That's it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, originally, I didn't want to do it, but uh, I kind of figured that if I ever want to do anything, maybe fly or go out with friends, and it's better that you know, I just do it now, and then eventually I'm going to have to do it. I didn't really want to do it to begin with, but uh, I think everything will be okay. Well, if I'm the billionth uh, customer, then uh, you know I take, uh, I take pleasure in it. According to the Times of Israel, the health ministry announced last Sunday that it would seek government approval to lift all restrictions on seating at sports stadiums and culture venues for those who have already been inoculated against the virus. In general, caps limiting attendance at events by those holding a so-called green pass, indicating they have been either vaccinated or recovered from the infection would be removed, as well as rolling back curbs for those who have been vaccinated. The plans will also see an easing on public life for those who have not yet had the shots and children below the age of 16 who currently don't qualify for vaccination. As infections have dwindled, Israel has rolled back restrictions on public life, including lifting the requirement to wear face masks outdoors, which ended last week. With its aggressive vaccination drive, Israel has seen a sharp drop in daily mortality and infection rates since the pandemic peaked in late January. Eagle News will be back with more updates. Please don't go away.
innovation, digital disruption, globalization, startups, micro, small and medium enterprises, as well as large corporations, all face interesting challenges in the market today. Peek into the world of exciting opportunities and partnerships to drive growth with the latest business news and information. We are open for business. Your weekly dose of entrepreneurial inspiration to update you on the latest developments in the world of business. Get up close and personal with CEOs and thought leaders to help you discover valuable insights Sharpen your instincts for smart decision-making with the latest markets and economic trends, disruptive ideas, global innovation, social entrepreneurship, and other leading-edge business ideas. Join the conversations to create a more vibrant environment for entrepreneurship. Catch Open for Business from Vision to Action. Welcome back to the news. New York City filed suit on Thursday against major oil corporations Exxon, Shell and BP for misleading consumers about their role or the role their products play in climate change. The lawsuit alleges the companies were systematically and inter intentionally deceiving New Yorkers about the disastrous impacts of fossil fuels. The city seeks to stop companies and the American Petroleum Institute from this greenwashing and to seek financial penalties. Our children deserve to live in a world free from climate change and we must do everything in our power to give them hope, said Mayor Bill de Blasio in a statement. That means taking on some of the biggest polluting corporations for false advertising and greenwashing in direct violation of our consumer protection laws. My Earth Day message to big oil see you in court, he said. The lawsuit filed in the state Supreme Court comes as President Joe Biden hosted a climate summit with 40 world leaders to jumpstart efforts to reduce polluting emissions globally. The New York's or New York's Corporation Council, James E. Johnson said, consumer are entitled to accurate information on fossil fuels. But the oil companies have spent millions to persuade consumers that they present a clean, green choice, but they don't. They say they are making meaningful investments to protect the environment, but they aren't, he said. The latest legal battle comes after a federal court earlier this month ruled against the city in a separate suit, saying greenhouse gas emissions should be handled by federal law. In other news, police said two young hikers were found dead Thursday on the erupting volcano of Piton de la Fernese on France's Indian Ocean territory of La Réunion. The hikers, both in their 20s, had set out on a walking trip on the volcano in the southeast of the island, but they were found dead in the volcano's main caldera. The hollow formed after magma erupts, according to a statement. The cause of the death was not immediately clear. The site of the volcano, whose eruption began on April 10, has proved a major local attraction despite COVID-19 restrictions. The two had been due to meet their families on Wednesday at a car park next to the volcano, but they never appeared at the meeting place, prompting the families to call the police. Accidents involving hikers on the volcano are relatively common but are rarely fatal. One of these came in 2003 when a young man was burned to death after falling into a crevice, crevice near a lava flow the victim had wanted to photograph the eruption. The volcano located in an unhabited area in the southeast of the island has erupted around 20 times over the last decade and its violent bursts of activity often prompts stunning lava flows. And 
And uh, NASA's mini helicopter Ingenuity on Sunday successfully completed its third flight on Mars, moving farther and faster than ever before with a peak speed of 6.6 feet per second. After two initial flights during which the craft hovered above the red planet's surface, the helicopter on this third flight covered 64 feet or 50 meters of distance, reaching the speed of 6.6 feet per second or 2 meters per second or 4 miles per hour in this latest flight. Ingenuity's flights are challenging because of conditions vastly different from Earth's foremost, among them a rarefied atmosphere that has less than 1% of the density of our own. This means that Ingenuity's rotors, which span four feet, have to spin at 2,400 revolutions per minute to achieve lift about five times more than a helicopter on Earth. NASA announced it is now preparing for a fourth flight. Each flight is planned to be of increasing difficulty in order to push Ingenuity to its limits. The Ingenuity experiment will end in one month in order to let Perseverance return to its main task searching for signs of past microbial life on Mars. Definitely missing the way we're watching the Oscars before. I know, the in-person one, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, well, that's it for tonight's broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us. I am CJ Hero. Please join us again tomorrow. Yes, and before we go, I'd like to uh, thank Tito Rudy, Daddy Rudy, and Mommy Baby uh, Celestial uh, for their gift for my late birthday gift. Thank you very much po. Salamat po. <laughs> and at the end of the day, there remains so much more to be grateful for. I'm Alma Angeles and we live, we live in interesting, in interesting times. times.
podcast journalist Wang De La Fuente returns on Philippine television and radio 